One of America's most anthologized writers, Jesse Stewart has always written about his own place and his people in the Cumberland foothills. His life and writings embody many of the virtues of the pioneer settlers and much that is unique in the American character. But they are the embodiment of something universal as well. His works have been translated into 15 foreign languages. As teacher and lecturer, Stewart has ranged from rural Kentucky schools to the American University in Cairo, Egypt. Jesse Stewart is one of Kentucky's natural resources, a part of Kentucky's heritage. He is at home in Kentucky. His works are at home all over the world. Here is Jesse Stewart at home, interviewed by Jim Miller, a Kentucky poet and oh, yes, teacher. I've had uh, four summers working Peabody. And was that done in connection with Vanderbilt, or was that? Uh, no, it was. Oh. I went to Peabody a summer before I went to Vanderbilt. I see. Dr. Mary Washington Clark has written a book uh, on your a survey of all of your works up to a point in time, called Jesse Stewart's Kentucky. And I certainly agree with something she says um, at one point in that book that. Your work is a veritable um, repository of the culture of the Appalachian region. And a curious thing, uh, the way I see it, is that your work, um, you, you have passed along this tradition. You have reflected that tradition. But you've become a part of it, too, in the, in the process of, of doing it. They asked me this question. You used to talk about cultures. And I've said this pretty much over the United States. When I've been interviewed, when I've spoken, I say to other people, I said, we are the only people, the Appalachian people in the United States, who has a culture. Mm -hmm. The other people don't have it, and there's a reason for this. They have been bombarded by so many different nationalities. You take, for instance, New England. They come in different nationalities, yes. and they keep coming. They keep yes. coming. Well, they couldn't settle down to a fixed culture at all. Appalachia, they go out, but no one comes in. Right. See, we hold. We got ours right out. You can just find so many words. And I know you've been over to England, Ireland, and Scotland, and Wales. We have what they, they still have a lot of it over there. And I think we're going to endure from this point of view. Mm -hmm. We're that stock of people. And that, that country over there, what all may be said about it, has survived for 2,000 years since the Romans. Mm -hmm. And they still retain their originality in different parts of those small countries. Oh, it's amazing, it's amazing how, how, how it is. is. Well, we hold that way in Appalachia. Right. Well, you look what you've got in Appalachia. And I don't think, I don't think time, uh, radio, television, movies, mm -hmm. uh, going to school, will ever take that out of us. We'll still be Appalachia. So uh, as time goes on, we'll change a lot, but we'll still be Appalachia. Yes. A um, lot of your work has uh, been associated with uh, regionalism. I'd like to hear what you have to say on that subject, regionalism. Um, uh, you made a definite decision when you did come back to Kentucky, and yet uh, uh, your material has uh, grown out of Kentucky, yet you, you've traveled, you've been all around the world and uh, lived in various places, and your stories have traveled too. I think after going over some of the great writers of this world, nearly all of them have been regionalists. Mm -hmm. They had nearly all they had a basis for regionalism. In this country, now you, you can say what you want to, but there's Steinbeck. His area, his county in California. Yes, that's All right, right. how are you going to get away from Faulkner in one county? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, down in uh, uh, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you going to get away from uh, the uh, Carl Sandburg, the Midwest? Yeah. How are you going to get away from Robert Frost in New England? How are you going to get away from Jesse Stewart in Appalachia? That's, That's right. right. I mean, it's all the same. When you survey them, you see that everybody comes out of a An recognizable area. place. You're right yeah. now, that area, right now, yourself. Oh, yes. You're oh, Appalachia. Yes. So am I. Glad of it. <clears throat> but uh, I don't know why that I, I've gone places that's regionless. Jesse Stewart, regionless, mm -hmm. in front of my name. Yes. Well, I think regionless ought to come after my name. Have uh, Jesse Stewart or regionless instead of regionless Jesse Stewart. I've had, I've had that everywhere. And here I am published more than some of these people who are not regionalists and don't proclaim it, I have been published on mm -hmm. six continents. Yes. I've got books on six continents. Even if they don't get them legally, they're somehow pirated. 
<laughs> but, <laughs> but that's I'm a there. compliment in a way. Yes, it's I'm tickled to death. Just got, <laughs> got this big uh, bull tongue prow back from Japan, you know. Just got it in the other day. And it was, uh, uh, here's your where research comes in, which is, uh, uh, has great value for any writer. Uh, uh, Dr. Hensley Woodbridge, that did the bibliography on me, he found uh, where I'd had a book published in Japan. Mm -hmm. Well, he went to work on it, and he found it. Bull Tongue Plow was uh, uh, published there, 490 pages, translated into Japan and published in 1943, we were, when we were in the heights of war with Japan. I'd say. Yeah. Isn't that something? Right. I, I thought it was an honor to have a book stolen in time of war, the book <laughs> of poems and that. Uh, yeah. I, I, well, that's not, the only, uh, that's not the only place abroad where you're working. I've seen a list of about 15 or 16 foreign languages. Yes, that, I've been uh, that many or more. That you I've been published. Uh, let's see. Uh, you, you can do something like this. Consider all the countries in the world, I think, I've been in ever other one of them with something. Mm -hmm. I've been published in South America. I've been published in the uh, British Isles, several books, uh, Denmark, uh, Germany, uh, France, po uh, uh, Czechoslovakia. Uh, every place but where my father's people came from, Greece. I mean, uh, uh, Scotland mm -hmm. and the country I love, Greece. I've yes. never been published in either one of those countries. Yes. Can't get a thing in there. That's, well, that's but I'm, uh, I'm in the Mideast, though, look, uh, uh, Arabic countries, I've got two books there, my Frederick Runso True is used as a tech bo textbook in about 28 countries, and uh, it's used in the French-speaking countries of Africa. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm published in Taiwan, I'm published mm -hmm. in Korea, uh, published in Japan, Australia, I'm published everywhere nearly, and yet regional. Originally, though, but you go all around the world <laughs> as a regionalist. Yeah, I said, just going everywhere. Yeah. My work has, and somebody asked me why. You know, that's a good question. Yes. Why? Why yes. would a story come out of, I don't get them all from Kentucky, all my stories. I get them uh, like one novel down in East Tennessee, you know, yes. I, pretty much Appalachia, yeah. but uh, uh, some Daughter of, of the Legend. Yes, Daughter of the Legend yes. down there. And I get stories, I've got many stories from Tennessee, many from West Virginia, Southern Ohio, Kentucky. Tennessee, uh, in Middle Tennessee, I've got them pretty much over a pretty mm -hmm. good area. Yes. Not, but I've got an awful lot of out of my county and could never hardly, I could hardly ever exhaust the material uh, that if a, a writer can see it. But mm -hmm. one, one of the things, I think, for instance, you know what one of the great uh, symbols is for, it's un a universal symbol in writing? Well, you are a man, well, a yes. chicken. Yes. Everybody's got chickens. Uh, that nest egg story of mine went around the world. I wrote nice Because food. people could immediately uh, understand. Uh, level with it. Yes. And uh, so, uh, now you can't do it with a love story. Because mm -hmm. over in Egypt, and getting these Muslim countries, boy, they don't meet girl. Their mm -hmm. marriages are still made for them. Yes. You don't have these yes. love affairs and all, so they don't mm -hmm. go there. But we think to do here that they don't do it. So, but you get in. Now, here's another uh, universal thing. is a snake. Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah, they're Snake everywhere. Symbols, uh, and they're treated very right. kindly through the Muslim countries and uh, yes. through the uh, Buddhist countries, you know. They don't kill them and all yeah. this and that. It's a, uh, it's a different world. And I've done an awful lot of snake stories. Mm, you certainly have. Here's another one now. I had a book, The Beatness Boy, a junior book. All right. I'm the Beatness Boy, it was published in India. And it was translated into <laughs> the, uh, <clears throat> their language, one of their languages. Yeah. And, uh, it's, uh, it was successful this way. You know why? Every, everywhere you go, there is somewhere, some grandmother is try, trying to raise a grandson or a granddaughter. Got him. See, it's a universal, right. the grandmother's, mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say, is mm -hmm. a universal symbol. Yeah. She goes around the world, too. So that's how my books have gotten in these places. So if you, if you simply concentrate on maybe a small region of the world, relatively small, but if you look at that and you see it clearly, you're going to um, you're going to find that life there is in many ways exactly yes, like I other ways. Uh, other places, and that's yes. what they said. You know what they said of the thread that runs so true, which I wrote in is published in 1949 and still spelling wonderful. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, uh, written from 40. I started out in 47, fooled around with it, and. Uh, got the editing and took about half of it out and finally Scribner said, uh, you're not the editor, let us have the book. <laughs> so I let him have it and uh, I wish I'd left some of the things in there that was out. 
Uh, but the uh, Egyptians said, your problems, I'll just mention this, this mm -hmm. is, a green, is a written on, the, on one county, Greenup County and Souda County, Ohio, on the Portsmouth, across yes. the river there, where it taught school, just that little area. And yet Egypt, with 30 million people, when I was there and taught, they said, your problems are our problems in the school. Same thing. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that? That's fantastic. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> The typical um, situation of writers that's been reported over 40, 50 years in America is to uh, come out of the Midwest or come out of the South and, um, and head for New York City. That's right. Well, you didn't go that route. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. I didn't go to Hollywood either. You didn't go to Hollywood. <laughs> I was off right place there and yeah. good money, but I didn't go. You went back to Kentucky. I went back and uh, lived within a mile of where I was born. Yeah. On the same land where five generations mm -hmm. of us have lived. And I think it's a good place. In fact, I love it. I, I don't stay there all the time. We've lived in other foreign countries. Uh, yeah. I, I, my wife and I have lived in two, mm -hmm. and I've lived in three. I lived in one for his mm -hmm. marriage. Mm -hmm. And uh, but just as quick as I get uh, away from a foreign country, I head back for home. Yeah. It's yeah. one of the finest places, and I I could take all this time explaining why that we live in this North Temperate Zone. Good balance of four seasons, right through Kentucky. Virginia, across through here. It's a marvelous place to live. Yes, great. And even back uh, when you were writing the poems that went into Man with a Bull Tongue Plow, I believe you, you had that same kind of uh, idea. There's a poem in here which expresses that, that idea of going home. Apparently, you're away from home when you write it. I wonder if you'd, you'd mind reading that for us. Yes, I can tell you where I wrote this poem. <clears throat> I was hitchhiking home from Lincoln Memorial University and before I got into Berea College, along that road down there somewhere. About oh, 25 somewhere. Yes, I wrote this poem. Yeah. I was standing beside the road and I wrote it. <laughs> Kentucky, I shall return to you someday to live out in your wind and rain and sun and watch your trees and fields together run and orchards whiten with the blooms of May. I shall go back and sit before the fires at home and tell tales with a fellow rover. Before I'm cold and the best of life is over, we'll tell of happier days and fighting sires. I shall go back to tramp the crimson leaves that spread like quilts upon the frosty ground. I'll take my gun and faithful hunting hound and be alone where wind and treetop grieves. Kentucky, your dwindling autumn streams flow out across old meadows of my dreams. Yeah, that's, that's the sentiment, and you did just that. I did just that. I, that poetry, mm -hmm. you can tell, it's just a little bit awkward, that poem is an old and it's written by a very young person. I tried to go on the way I was going. I was trying to imitate. Mm -hmm. I had, uh, and it was mo mostly Frost I admired and Carl Sandburg. And some of my poems are imitative of Carl Sandburg in the early days. Mm -hmm. Davidson said, get off of them, you be Justice Stewart. Mm -hmm. And go back and write of your country as the Scots have written about Scotland and the mm -hmm. Irish about Ireland. Now, where could a teacher ever right. give a student better than that? And he gave me. So I went back and I've written them. Yeah. And I keep on. And another uh, aspect that I have had, I, I, I married a girl that wanted to, and she's a native of my area, oh, yes. and she wanted to stay there. And we went back to the farm and fixed up a farm home mm -hmm. where I lived as a boy. And, and she's all for this staying there. And uh, I go out and get my stories. Now, if I'd gone to, uh, if I'd stayed in a foreign country too long, I'd have got lost on my mm -hmm. material back here. Even lost the war. touch with it. I'd lost touch. The war almost mm -hmm. threw me out, off. Yes. I was in the World War II, and I came back, I couldn't write anything. Mm -hmm. But it is a fantastic thing that has happened. You went home, but you've gone all over the world anyway. Yes, I go out there. Both yeah. literally and figuratively. Uh, your work has gone all over the world, and you have gone all over the world, too. Yes. <laughs> all because you went home. Because you went home. That's uh, not a bad title, is it, going home? <laughs> Jesse Stewart at Home was a Western Kentucky University television production.